Well, good evening. evening. And, and happy, happy Constitution, Constitution Day. Day. Thank, Thank you for being here. here. I'm Dave Whitney. I'm director of the Hollenstein Center for Presidential Studies here at Grand Valley State University. I'm also the moderator for this evening's debate, and I give you a warm Michigan welcome for being here this evening. There was a rumor, I've got to tell you, there was a rumor earlier today that this event was going to be canceled. I don't know where it started, but I think you guys are living proof that the event did not get canceled. <laughs> so I'm glad you're all here. Well, the is to begin by recognizing that no event is pulled off on its own without the help of a lot of people and the support of a lot of folks. I'd like to acknowledge our partners first thing this evening. Stephen College of Business, represented by John Rifle. Raise your hand there. Thank you. Grand Valley Honor College, represented by Jeff Chamberlain. Thank you very much. And the History Department at Grand Valley, represented by Lynn Mace. Where are you? All the way there. Thank you very much. And I also want to acknowledge MTV, which has come over from Lansing to televise this evening's debate. And you'll be able to see reruns of this at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. if you're having trouble. So thank you, MTV. In fact, thank you all for everything you've done to help make this a successful evening. There are also several people I would like to acknowledge. Rob Hollenstein, of course, here in the front row. Rob Hollenstein is the founding benefactor of the Hollenstein Center. It's his vision of service, his vision of leadership that inspire everything that we do at the Hollenstein Center. So we appreciate you being here, Ralph. Thank you. Peter Cook is another great benefactor of the Hollenstein Center. Peter and Ralph together, yes, right here in the front row. <laughs> Peter and Ralph together have done such a wonderful thing to help get our Leadership Academy launched. Give you an idea of the growth. Our Leadership Academy had 12 individuals last year, 12 individuals the year before. It now has over 30 people because of the generosity of these individuals. So help us shape the future. Thank you very much, folks. Grand Valley trustee, Nori Myers, is over here. Nori, we're glad to see you. Husband, thank you very much. And Don Lovers is represented by Nancy, President Emeritus of Grand Valley. Thank you for being here. And the two final individuals, I mean, I, believe me, I love you all. I'd love to talk about all of you. But the two last individuals I want to mention by name are two vice presidents here at Grand Valley. Mary Beth Wardrop in the front row. And Jim Bachmeyer in the second row. Well, well, this evening's, evening's debaters um, are, are really a treat to have with us this evening. Uh, we're, we're very, very happy to have them here because public debate has been called an elixir of democracy, a great clarifier for democracy. I heard Truman, for example, was a great supporter of debate. He was also very decisive. He would not come away from a debate wondering what had just gone on. He would make a decision after he heard the debates on the table. And there was an instance when uh, Harry Truman had two economic advisors come to the White House, and he was growing impatient. The cabinet thought he was impatient because Truman was saying, Truman's uh, advisor was saying, well, on the one hand, if you do so-and-so, this will happen. On the other hand, if you do so-and-so, that will happen. On the one hand, on the other hand. Finally, Truman exasperated, said to his cabinet, can't you find me a one-handed economist? <laughs> Well, the evening debaters do not have the problem that uh, that one-handed or that economic advisor did, and I asked them to square off tonight because they have three qualities that are essential for any good debate. These debaters must be wise as Solomon, as decisive as Cicero, and as convincing as Tina Fey. <laughs> Seriously, it is an honor to have these two gentlemen with us this evening, and I. But I'd like to introduce them now more formally. To my left is Rusty Hill. He's representing John McCain. Uh, he teaches at the Gerald R. Ford School for Public Policy in Ann Arbor, the University of Michigan, and he's also the communications director with Attorney General Mike Cox. 
Professor Hills has spent the majority of his last two decades, uh, actually better than uh, two decades, in public service in the state of Michigan and also very involved in politics. He was twice elected unanimously to serve as chairman of the Michigan Republican Party, and before that he served 10 years as one of Governor Engler's chief lieutenants in the Engler administration. And before his years in the Engler administration, Rusty worked for uh, then chairman of the Republican Party, Spencer Abraham, and together in the late 80s and early 90s, they helped make the Michigan Republican Party a force to be reckoned with in the 1990s. Prior to his work in politics and service, Professor Hill worked as a reporter and as an anchorman for CBS and NBC television affiliates in Lansing, Jackson, and Flint. And he, before that, was a student uh, at Notre Dame. He got a uh, government, a master's degree in government from the University of Notre Dame. And before that, he got a, a degree in telecommunications from Michigan State University, a bachelor's degree. On a personal note, I should add, that Rusty's, Rusty's been a dear friend, friend of mine for many years, I think about 16 years now. And um, our kids are about the same age, they've played together, they've grown up together. One, One little secret, secret I know about Rusty, <laughs> you might want to use this at some point in the day. <laughs> One, little, <laughs> One little secret I know that he is just daft about turtles. Well, Rusty has adopted turtles and they live to these great old ages. He takes such good care of them. And, and so, so I thought, given, given the troubles that the GOP has had, the GOP maybe should ditch the elephant and adopt <laughs> the turtle with, with this stick and, and the jackpot. <laughs> to my right is Senator Buzz Thomas, representing Senator Barack Obama. He's, He's called the rising star by the Detroit News and one of Michigan's five key technology leaders by the Detroit Free Press. Senator Thomas is known both as a political force and a dynamic political leader in the Lansing legislature. The senator is in his second term in the Michigan Senate, serving as the state uh, representative for the 4th District, and recently he was elected by his colleagues as the Senate Democratic floor leader. He's one of the few recent Michigan legislators who's had leadership positions in both the Michigan House and the Michigan Senate. But at the age of 39, Senator Thomas is an established leader in the fields of energy, technology, health policy, and urban development. He also sits on a number of key committees. I mean, I, I debated whether to go through all the committees that you were on, but it shows all of his vast expertise in a number of areas as a public servant in Lansing. Now, on a personal note, I'd like to tell you a little story that resonates well in West Michigan. Back, back in the 1930s, 1930s go, go back to Ann Arbor to the football team at the University of Michigan. At that time, there was a, a very strong-willed center for the football team, and there was also an African-American, the only African-American on the team for the Michigan Wolverines in the early 30s. And there came a time in the schedule where George Tech was going to come up from Atlanta and play the Wolverines in Ann Arbor. And, um, when, when George, George Tech found out that there was an African-American on the Michigan Wolverine team, George Tech said, we won't take the field if that African-American comes out and plays for Michigan. Well, well that senator, who was white, heard this, and he was indignant. He was enraged that George Tech would bring that kind of racism up to Ann Arbor, or anywhere for that matter. And so the senator went to the African-American and he said, you know what, I won't play. In fact, I'll try to talk all these guys into boycotting this game. We will not play this game if that stands. Well, the African-American player said, no, I want you to play. I want you to go out and play your hearts out. I want you to beat Georgia Tech. And that's exactly what the Michigan Wolverines did. Now, the rest of the story is this. The center for the Michigan Wolverines was a young man named Gerald R. Ford, future president of the United States. And the African-American for the Wolverines was the grandfather of Senator Buzz Thomas. It's a great story, and uh, we're so proud to have both of you here.